Hi everyone, this is Math 6, Lesson 8-5. Summarize data using measures of variability. In this lesson, we'll be able to use measures of variability to describe a data set. All right, let's look at solve and discuss it. Suppose you collected data from 11 people about the number of pieces of fruit they have eaten in the past week. The median number is six pieces of fruit. We're going to make two possible dot plots that could be used to display the data. One where the data vary a little and another one in which the data vary a lot. Explain how you created your dot plots. So um, if you have 11 data, right, um, which one should be the six? because median is six. In order for the median to be six, um, which number? So is it the first number, second number, or the third number? Um, so think about your numbers here. Your first number, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, right? And then in order for your median to be six, which one out of these 11 numbers should be the six? So first and 11th gone, 10 and second, third and ninth, five and eighth. Um, right, first 11, second 10th, third ninth, four eighth, and then five seven. Yeah. And then you have a median of six number. So the sixth number is always going to be the median. So the sixth number should always be six, the value of six, okay, when you order from least to greatest. So for 11 data values to have a median of six must be the sixth value, okay? So we're going to create two data sets, two dot plots um, that have that both have 11 data and six as the as the median. So let's create dot plots. So one is going to have a widespread, one is going to have a, a small spread. So you can say you can have, um, so looking at your data numbers, you can say, oh, we can have one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four, five, and six to be the six, right? Six, and then seven, eight, nine, ten, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven. Okay, two tens. So we can plot them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eleven. And then we can plot the dot plots. We got one, one, two, one, two. One, three, two, four, one, six, one, seven, one, eight, one, nine, one, two, ten. So that's gonna be our first data that has more spread that has data more spread out. We're gonna create another dot plot that has um this uh, 11 value with the same median six, but it's less spread out. So in order from in order in order to do that, we're gonna push all the 
dots in the middle, but it has the same median. So we can start with four. Four, five, five, five. One, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so that's less spread out. So let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we got four, one, two, three, four, five, and three, six, and two, eight, and one, nine. Okay, so compared to the first dot plot and the second the second dot plot is less spread out right but they both have 11 data with the same median one so we're gonna we're gonna say these the first data values are close wait the first data values much more spread out and then the second data values close to the okay I want to move here Okay, there you go. All right, focus on math practices. Jacqueline said that only three people surveyed ate more than six pieces of fruit in the past week. Do you agree? Explain or explain why, why not? She says only three people surveyed ate more than six pieces of fruit in the past week. So look at the first, the second data. Yeah, it looks like one, two, three. There are three people um, who ate more than six pieces. But what about the first dot plot we created? One, two, three, four, five people ate more than six pieces. So does it is it is this always true if we have eleven values and um, and a median of six? No, that doesn't always. Uh, that's not always true. So no, I disagree. The data shows that the middle piece of data is six. This means that five people ate more than, five people could eat more could a more than six pieces of fruit it Okay. So the essential question for this lesson is how can a variability of data be described using a single number? Example one, find the mean absolute deviation to describe variability. Anne is looking at a math quiz scores for one grading period. She wants to know how much her score is varied. She knows that her average or the mean score is 86%. How can Anne determine how much her score is varied during this grading period? So the average for her math, math um, quiz scores is gonna be 86. But how do we know how much it varied? 
Well, we're gonna find the differences between each of Anne's quiz scores and her mean score. Show all the differences with positive integers. So you know the average for her. And we're gonna see how far, how far away each data, each of her quiz score is from the average. So 82 is how many away from the average 86? Four. And 76 is how many away from 86? 10 and so on. So we're gonna find um, how much it deviates from the mean score. And that's the distance from the mean, okay, for each data. And then we're gonna find the mean of the distances. So we're not finding the mean of the quiz scores. That's what we already know, but we're gonna find the mean of the distances. Okay, we're gonna add all the distances and then divide it by eight because we have eight values and that's gonna be six or 6.75. And that's gonna be the mean absolute deviation, which means it's the, it's the average distance away from the mean for the data set. Okay, so that determines how much her math quiz scores vary during the grading period. So her scores vary by an average of 6.75 points is, um, is the answer. Okay, so, so remember that the absolute deviation is the absolute value of the difference between a value and the mean. And the mean absolute deviation is um, the average of the, the, ab the absolute deviations, okay? So let's look at try it. Anne's vocabulary quiz scores are 75, 81, and 90. The mean score is 82. What is the mean absolute deviation? Okay, so her scores are 75, 81, 90, and the mean is 82. So we're gonna find the absolute deviation for each data, 82 minus 75, the positive value because the distance is always positive. So 82 minus 75 gives you the distance away um, from the mean for the score 75, okay? So 82 minus 75 is seven, 81. So 82 minus 81, is gonna be one. And 90, no, 82 minus 90 is gonna be negative eight, but as a value makes it positive. So it's positive eight. Okay. So well, um, now we have the absolute deviation, which is the distances from the scores to the mean score. And we're going to find the average for the absolute deviation. So 7 plus 1 plus 8 divided by 3 is the mean absolute deviation. That's going to be 5.333 repeated. Okay. So that's 16 over three or 5.3 repeated. So that's our math mean absolute deviation. So N scores vary about 5.3 points from the mean. MAD is uh, seven plus one plus eight divided by three, which is equal to 5.333 dot dot dot. And so Anne's scores vary about 5.3 points from the mean. Hey, convince me, can the mean absolute deviation ever have a negative value? Explain. Could this ever be negative? Remember, absolute means make it positive. So absolute value is po always positive. So mean absolute deviation will always be positive as well. So no, it cannot ever have 
a, a negative value. So because the absolute value, the absolute, absolute value is taken to find the absolute deviation, the mean absolute deviation can never Okay, so example two, find the inner quartile range IQR to describe variability. So there's another way to describe variability. The dot plot shows and science quiz scores. How can Anne determine the variability in their science quiz scores? So she's got uh, these quiz scores and we're gonna draw a box plot to determine the inner Quartile range. So from the dot plot, we know she's got she's got some data. So 78, um, 379, and 180, and 81, 282, uh, 82. Okay, let me write that again. And then 184. So then we're gonna find the median in order to figure out how to draw the box plot, right? So this was last lesson. So what is our median? Two, three, and two, three. So 80 is our median. And so that's where our middle point go. And then from there, we're gonna count the median. So 79 and 79, Average is 79. So 79 is our um, first quartile. And then the upper quartile is 82. And then our minimum is 78. Our maximum is 84. And then we're going to draw the box um, from the three points in the middle. Okay, the interquartile range, the IQR, is a measure of variability and it represents the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. Okay, so we now we know that the first quartile is 79 and the third quartile is 82. So the interquartile range is how long the box is. So we're going to subtract 82 minus 79, and that's three. This box is three long, right? Three units long. So that means IQR is three. So at least half of N science quiz scores were within three points. So that box plot, that bo the box in the box plot shows that's about half. Um, that's the half of um, the data. So you can say at least half of Ann Sands quiz scores were within three points. Okay, that's how we interpret the IQR and how we use it. So look at try question. The dot plot shows the distribution of Ann's health quiz scores. How can the IQR describe her scores? So draw a box plot for this and describe the the variability using the IQR. See if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? All right, so what is your median, your first quartile, your third quartile? So you can um, count from your dot plot as well. So that's your median. And then your first quartile is going to be 86. And then your third quartile is this one. Um, third quartile, 892. So median is 90, first quartile, 86, third quartile, 92. So if you draw the box plot, it's going to be this, right? That's your minimum, that's your maximum, 86 first quartile, 90 median, and then 92 third quartile. So your IQR 
is determined by subtracting your third quartile minus first quartile. So subtract 86 uh, from 92. Subtract first quartile from the third quartile and you get six. So how would you describe it? We figured out that our IQR is six. So that means at least half of Anne's scores are within six. Okay. All right, example three, use the mean absolute deviation to find the variability of a data set. So mean absolute deviation was what we did in example one. You figure out the distance from the points from the data to your um, um, average and then find the average of that. So Jonah recorded points his team scored during its la last nine basketball games. The mean number of points scored was 42 and the MAD um, mean absolute deviation was 4.4 repeated. How can Jonah use these measures to describe the variability of the points his team scored during the last nine games? So the MAD show that the scores generally vary greatly from the mean. The scores were mostly less than 38 um, or greater than 46 is what you can um, say using those um, data. Okay, so the mean was 42. MAD means on average the scores varied about four points from 42. So that means you can say, oh, 42 plus 4.4 is um, 46.4, right? And then and the 42 minus 4.4 because if you subtract 4.4, that's also 4.4 distance away from 42, right? So you're gonna add and subtract your MAD, which is the distance, average distance away from your average point. That means it varies mostly from 37.6 to 46.4. So for for the basketball game, that's a lot of difference, okay? So you can say generally very greatly from the mean. All right, let's look at try a question. So Jonah's team score 36, 37, 38, 38, 41, 46, 47, 47, and 48 points in the last nine games. Find the IQR and range of the points Jonah's team scored in its last nine games. Are these good? measures for describing the point scored. So first figure out the IQR and range um, of, of his team. And let's talk about if it's a good measure. So see if you can do it by yourself. Come back when you're ready for answers. Are, are you ready? How do you figure out IQR? So IQR is when you find the, the distance of the box plot, right? The box in the box plot. So IQR is, again, your uh, third quartile minus your first quartile, right? So your median is one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, one, two, median is 41. Median is 41. Your first quartile is going to be 37.5. And then your third quartile would be 47, okay? Yeah, so third quartile, 47 minus 37.5 is 9.5, yes. And, and how do you figure out the range? Range 
is your maximum minus your minimum. So what's your maximum? 48 minus minimum 36 is 12. So is this a good variability? First, let's write down our RQR. Um, 0.5 is equal to 9.5. And then our range is 48 minus 36. So is this good? The IQR and the range are close in value. They're pretty close. 9.5 and 12 um, are not even three points away. So it's pretty close. So this shows that about half of the data is clustered at each end. These are good measures for describing the point squared. Okay. So you're going to compare IQR and the range. And if they're close enough, close in value, it's a good, it's a good measure. About half of the data is clustered each end. These are good measures for describing the All right, we're going to summarize our lesson. So the key concept from this lesson is the mean absolute deviation and the interquartile range. So they both use a single number to describe the variability, how your data vary, OK, or how it's spread out. So the mean absolute deviation, again, tells you how far the data are spread out from the mean. And the interquartile range tells you how far the middle of the data is spread out from the median. Okay. So the mean absolute deviation use is talking about the average. The interquartile range is talking about your median. Okay. Median of the median and then uh, mean of the mean. So that was lesson 8-5, summarizing data using measures of variability. Um, in our next lesson, lesson six, we're going to choose appropriate statistical measures using all the things that we learned. And seven is the last lesson for this topic. All right, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask Ms. Kang in class. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.